Welcome to Anson Griffiths Occasion Series for YouTube tutorials featuring MATLAB. Today we're looking at outlier detection. So just get that. And just to say an outlier is something that deviates so much from the other observations as to rouse suspicion from Hawkins or something along those lines. And you would get that in any production process, you know, be it medical fraud or making any sort of product or geosurveying or whatever you're having. So Generally, there's two approaches. There's to the, get the mouse up there. There's the parametric method, which is normally the normal distribution, or its first cousin is T, or a non-parametric method. Now, I'm not going to be looking at the non-parametric today. I'm just going to concentrate in the student T version of the parametric. So we'll just go on another little bit. If you just do it based on the normal distribution, you have a set of data, you generate the mean, you generate the standard deviation, and you calculate the Z score and the Z score that we get for this particular observation there, uh, uh, 24, where the mean is 28.61 and the standard deviation is 1.51 is minus 3.04. And just at the very bottom of the screen, the mean plus or minus three standard deviations contains 99.7% of the data. And since minus 3.04 lies outside that, you would conclude that the reading 24 is an outlier. Now, Grubb did a better test than this based on the student T, and it's a maximized normed residual test. So we have it there, and you know if you want to go into detail, I can supply you the paper. So let's just get rid of that. Uh, just look at my, just to mention here that I'm using uh, in MATLAB, I'm using the function written by Brett Cholson, and he's a, a MATLAB employee and a highly respected programmer for MATLAB. So I'm using his function. And if you're also using MATLAB, you can get rid of outliers using the curve fitting app. So you can either run, run Brett Cholson's uh, function or you can use it from the curve fitting app. But I'm going to use Brett's today. And Grubb's original paper, if you want to read it in detail, I got it there on webspace.ship.edu. So if you just do a search for Grubb on webspace.ship.edu, you'll get his original paper there and you can read it at your leisure. Uh, I have the code here. Let's just maximize it here. So there's our original array. Excuse me. And on line eight, when we see it running, we got the size, and we're going to see it was of size 13. We ran Brett's function on the original array at a significance level of 0.05, and this returns three things. It will return the matrix B, which is the original array minus the outliers, the index that will tell me the position of the outliers, and this here will tell me the actual the actual outliers themselves. So IDX is what position they occurred up here, and outliers are the actual values. And then the matrix B will be uh, the, the original array minus the outlier. So I ran it here. There it is in the PDF. So the original array, row one, rows with one and 13 so there was 13 numbers in the original array and i got that by using size i ran brett's function so there's the matrix b so the matrix b is the original array minus the outliers so you can see there's only 10. The IDX is 5, 8, and 11. So position 5, position 8, and position 11 in the original array, they were the outliers. What were the outliers? Minus 6.4, 4.2, and 6.8. And then I got the size of B, and you can see that's 1 and 10, because obviously 13 was the original, and you deleted 3, or those 3 outliers, so you're going to end up with 10. Okay, so hope that helps.
and obviously the array B will just contain the 10 numbers. Thanks very much for listening. Bye.